I'm Hewins. And I'm Sun. And we both moved down to Atlanta to pursue filmmaking, specifically writing and directing. And one thing you'll know when you move down to Atlanta or you move to a place to get into the film industry, even though it is known that there are so many people working in this location and that this is where the industry is, you get there and you don't know where to go to get the job. What right. you know? All right, here we are. We're in the filmmaking hub. All the studios are there. Right. But if I walk into the studio, nobody knows me. The security's you, gonna kick me you out. You mean I just can't go down to the employment office and go, "Hey, I want to direct a movie." No, that's you've got to to direct something. I mean, not let alone get a PA job. On I'll set. fill out the application for director if yeah. you want me to. So clearly, it doesn't work like this. And you know, if you probably already know this, and you've probably already experienced some. You know, frustration. It's like, all right, look, I made this big plan to move to this place, and I thought this was it. I'm in the industry now. Yeah. But let's say you've moved here, and now you you're still struggling to get jobs. You could have industry. one like a sign and stand on the side of the road, and we'll direct for you know, for food or mm -hmm. whatever. Yep. But but fig bars, know, fig bars. That's very specific. Um, so. It, it all depends on where you are and what you want to do. So just looking at it from our perspective, moving to a new town, we both want to be writer directors, you being younger and more willing to say, start at the bottom on set and work mm -hmm. your way up PA. I mean, I'd, I would do it too, but it's a little different for somebody at, at my age. Right. So, you know, the thing is you, it, it's an unusual industry and it's all about who you know. And I'm sure you've heard that. That's, it's kind of a cliche. It's who do you know? So if you don't know anybody, you've got to make connections. So where do you begin? Right. Uh, you know, luckily I had a couple of friends who lived here in Atlanta that were already in the industry. Now we've been here, what, a year and a half and haven't gotten anything from those uh, connections. Um, you have. You've yeah. Gotten some work. I've been offered a lot of, a lot of PA work. And it could be because you're better looking, you're harder working, uh, you're smarter, you're funnier. Uh, you're more creative. I don't know. Could be those things. Well, but also that was because these are from connections that you know. I mean, I in my case, this is a little bit different than somebody who has is just moved to a place and knows absolutely nobody. True, but let's talk talk about for just a second. Uh, just because you knew them didn't automatically get you the job. If right. you remember, our friend Ramon said, "Well, hey, I'll get you work, Jackson, because I know you. I know your character and mm -hmm. your work ethic." But you're going to need to go and take this course first. So right. you went to the uh, what was like PA Academy. Mm -hmm. So you went and did that uh, intensive course. And once you did that, then he felt a little more comfortable. Right. Because when you ask a friend to get you work, they're putting their reputation on the line. Exactly. And so you have to realize that. Uh, and so you know they got to know that you're going to toe the line and do a great job, because that's something that's specific I feel like to the film industry especially is they people want to work with people they trust they know are going to show up because especially as you get bigger on productions and the day rates going up I mean yeah. I was talking to my friend the other day he says like you know the day rate on that is a hundred and fifty thousand dollars a day is what they're spending so you can't come in there and mess things up because you had an experience where a fellow PA dealing with background you know extras caused the whole production to s slow down and, and, and like waste time. And it's like, man, so every cog in the wheel uh, plays a big part. Right. And I think in that case, it was an honest mistake. But if you get somebody who is like, is going to slack off and, and, you know, you know, mistakes will happen on the set, but you can't get somebody who is just not going to give an, any effort or anything or, you know, people are willing Ramon knew that I was green, and everybody knew that I was green. People are, I, as I talk to people on set, they're willing to deal with green PAs, yeah. people on the entry level. But you've got to have a willingness to learn and a work ethic because if you, you don't know anything and you're there to just do the bare minimum and sit off to the side, it's going to wreck the production. And you saw that. You were putting in extra hours. You were staying past, making sure everybody was taken care of, everything was cleaned up. And that impressed people. So they wanted to work with you, even though you might not have known all the lingo or, 
you know, you might not have done the exact right things. Right. They saw this guy works hard. He shows up. He's here early. He stays late. And that's what they're looking for. They'll mm-hmm. train you up. So that's, that's another thing that's kind of interesting and different about the film industry is it's kind of like apprenticeships. There's that thing that goes on. Totally. So I was going to talk about looking for people or opportunities um, if you don't know anybody. And I'll give a for instance. I watched a movie. This was a couple of years ago. And I really liked it. Uh, it I could tell it was... They had done some filming in my old... Um, a place where I had lived at one point in time in Nashville, Tennessee. A very specific neighborhood. So I liked the film. And I said, I'm going to look the guy up that wrote and directed it. Mm-hmm. So I was able to find him on social media. I found him on LinkedIn. Sent him a message, you know, said, hey, I saw you were, you filmed your movie. I really liked it. You were filming in my old neighborhood in East Nashville. And there were a lot of artistic people that lived there. So if you mentioned that name, it's kind of like, oh, we've got a kinship. And he, you know, he replied. It was cool. It was nice. Uh, but I kept trying. I kept trying to get in touch with him. And I finally, after a while, talked him into a phone call. And, you know, he was super nice, but very busy, a successful guy. And I ended up just following him on social media, some other social media. And it was probably, I don't know, a year or so later, I saw that he posted he was going to do a script writing uh, class. It was in the middle of COVID. So it was going to be a Zoom type thing. And I said, I'm going to do this so I can, you know, get in and get to know him a little bit more. He can see me a little more face to face. It was over Zoom, but you could, you know, at least he'd get a little bit of my personality. And that was a week long class. So I had a lot of FaceTime with him and was able to prove myself that I had a little bit of talent, that, you know, I was a nice guy with some just crazy loon calling up. Because that's the thing, when you reach out to people cold, you know, they don't know you and, you know, they'll be nice or maybe they won't. But anyway, so I just developed that uh, relationship over time and, you know, I continue it to this day. Nothing big has come out of it. He's helped me in a couple of ways, like introducing me to other people. Uh, maybe I was looking for an attorney and he said, here, we'll try this guy. And, you know, so you never know. And you just have to keep those connections. And it, and it may be just a connection to something else, you know, on down the line. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, you know, that, that would be what I would say. And especially nowadays with, with social media, it's a little bit easier to get in touch with people. They won't always get back in touch with you. Uh, in fact, there was another writer director that you and I both like. And I had reached out to him on social media. He, you know, accepted my friendship, sent a couple of nice messages back and forth. Uh, you know, I bided my time a little bit. And then I asked him if he would be willing to take a call and just, you know, 10 minute call. I'd love to ask him a couple of questions. And I loved how honest he was. And he was like, sorry, man, I'm super busy. And we knew he had a movie that was on Netflix and it had just come out. I knew, I knew he was busy. But he was nice enough to say, sorry, man, I'm really busy right now. I can't take a call. Mm-hmm. Okay, cool. But I didn't give up. Uh, I looked for opportunities to maybe uh, send something to him that would be of value to him. Hey, you know, check this out. I, you know, or you know, like his movie was on Netflix. Maybe take a picture of it. You know, on the ratings and go, man, you're really climbing up the charts. Whatever it might be. Then I had the opportunity to go to an event in his hometown, and I reached out again and said, Hey, gonna be in your hometown. Be happy to come by and buy you a cup of coffee. And he said, Okay, let's do lunch. We ended up having a two-hour lunch with the guy. Super nice. You know, once again, uh, he was taking a little chance, coming and meeting some strangers. Right. But he got to meet us. We proved that we could we could eat our food without making a mess. You know, we, we didn't embarrass him. Uh, and it was a great meeting. And once again, we stay in touch to this day. And hopefully something, something good will come out of it. Right. So you just look for those avenues and opportunities to make connections. And, you know, I would say be, being respectful. Um, and there's a line between pushy and assertive. You know, you've, you've got to be assertive enough to get out there. But what you need to do is be attuned to people and, and realize, you know, okay, this guy's busy. I'll back off a little bit. Right. Or find something of value to offer them. You know, always, you're great about this. You know, coming at somebody, hey, what can I do for you? Is there anything I can do to help? I've got some free time next weekend. I'm in your town. You know, I'd love to help you out. You know, whatever it might be. See what their interests are, you know, and help them out. Send them something. Send them a piece of content that they might like. So, you know, those are some other ideas. Oh, yeah. 
you know, and here, here's something. I, you know, it's a little different with social media and you're, you're texting people or messaging. But once it comes time to get in front of people, you have to have people skills. Mm -hmm. And you have to get out there and, and talk to them and, and know how to talk to them. Um, a lot of people, it just seems like, are maybe a little awkward or, you know, what do I say? I don't know what to say. I don't know how to do small talk. So we are going to share with you guys uh, a video that we did on one of our favorite books. It was a book that was published in 1968. It's about this thin. It's, it's almost a pamphlet. Yeah, I mean, it's yeah. like 30 something pages. Yeah, I mean, you read it in five minutes. You read it faster than you watch this video. And, and it looks like it was typed on an old typewriter. It's not some font you're going to recognize. I mean, it's not courier, but it's real typewriter. Yeah. Uh, and it's super simple, very basic, but man, it really tells you how to work with people. Mm -hmm. Talks about human nature and everything. So you guys check that video out. I think it will do you a lot of good and help you when it's time to start getting out in the industry and meeting people. Um, let's see. But yeah, I, I think that's, were you about to say more about that video? No, no. Did you want to well, say Well, yeah, that? so I was going to say that video for the YouTube version of our podcast, it'll be linked in the description. If you're listening on audio only, go to our YouTube. It'll be on there, Skills with People. So it's practical people skills. And I just, the big takeaway for all we're talking about with breaking into the film industry is that it's based on trust and, and that it's trust with other people. So really you can't get it in the film industry without connecting with at least one other person. You've right. got to connect with other people. So if you think I'm bad at that, this is literally, this is a book that you gave me when I was awkward in high school before I got my first internship at Adult Swim down here in Atlanta. Um, and it, it just totally gave me so much more confidence because I at least had methods to rely on whether they would feel like they were working in real time or not I don't know but in the long run I can look back and go yes that definitely improved the way that I connected with people because it just gives tips about thinking about what you're doing externally like if right now we're having this conversation and you're nodding and <laughs> you're smiling well you might be usually somebody who's awkward might think they're nodding and smiling you know on the inside they might be agreeing with somebody saying but on the outside they might be frowning and and you know staring at the ground sometimes i'll stare off and be really in deep thought of what somebody's saying but the fact that i'm staring off looks like i'm disrespecting and i'm not interested in what hey man saying. are you listening to me <laughs> exactly i got some important stuff to say over here exactly so that's it, it's just more clear communication between people um so if you're worried about being awkward with people, uh, don't fret because this is something that anybody can do. And the truth is everybody struggles with this. And the truth is that there's a ton of awkward people high up and working in the film industry and that yeah. a ton of hardworking, awesome, kind people who are awkward. So you're gonna have awkward moments um, but if you realize that you can have your awkward moments and still connect with people, then it, it makes everything okay. You can uh, soak in the awkwardness. So I think that's the big thing is that this is all based on connection with people. Um, and if you're going, if you, you're trying to get into the film industry and you really feel like you don't have any contacts that are getting you anywhere and you need to make more, you're going to have to do some, like you're saying, kind of coming at people cold. You're gonna to have to try to get people on phone calls that you've never talked to before. You're gonna to have to get people on, to go meet you in person. And that can be intimidating, because it's like, I, you know, if you meet a good friend, you feel relaxed, at ease, you can just sit back, you know, if I'm talking to you, but if I'm talking to a guy that's worked on The Walking Dead, and he's a producer, you know, there's, it st starts to feel like, well, how am I gonna, connect with this person but if you realize okay there's fundamentals of a way that I can connect with everybody and even this person that you know maybe I, I feel not qualified to be in their presence if you treat them kindly and you show interest in them uh, and you try to figure out what their needs are there's going to be a way you can help you know I in high school I, I really honed my video editing skills so that wouldn't help me 
get and specifically for social media content or YouTube content that wouldn't help me get a job under a producer uh, or on set but these people have social media channels of their own stuff they're trying to promote maybe they might have a YouTube series that they're working you know yeah. people watch YouTube nowadays more than TV so there's different ways you know whether maybe you draw them some sort of illustration that promotes what they do <laughs> you know I don't know. So yeah. that's the thing is that pretty much anybody you can use this for and you're going to need to if you are trying to form new connections because you're going to have to start from ground, you know, from the, the square one with people. You're yeah. going to have to meet somebody completely fresh from scratch. That's right. That's right. So, yeah. So, I mean, that's kind of talks about proving yourself and your work ethic. So if you get those opportunities, you you really need to shine. You need to work hard. Uh, to prove yourself, show how hard of a worker you are, prove that work ethic, um, and you know, be trustworthy, somebody that they can count on, mm -hmm. and and that will uh, that will help you so much uh, to make connections in this industry. Right. Yeah. Like I said, if you're green and you're worried about that, I've experienced it because I'm still green. I'm still going to experience it for the next many jobs that I'm on. But that's the thing is, people know if you are trying you're firing on all cylinders that you can and really that's what they're looking out for because they know that it took them a long time to get where they are yeah you know you really notice that you're green when you're working alongside of people that have been in the business for over 20 years or 15 years or whatever because they have had so long to hone it it really makes you think that you're not good at it because you're alongside them but they know that it took them that long to get where they are. So that's reminds me, I've got a note here. Uh, the average overnight success is seven years. Yeah. You know, so you got to be in it for the long haul mm -hmm. and, and be ready to put in the years of work to prove yourself and make those connections. And after a few years of working hard and, you know, building that trust, then things are going to start to happen for you. Right. So check out the skills with people video. Yep. And go out there and make those connections. Let's get connected. Let's break into the industry. We don't need some employment office to figure it out. We're just going to break right in, one one connection at a time. I don't know. I'm going to get on monster.com and see if there's any movies that need directors. <laughs> <laughs>